Now for IV therapy. Remember, IV administration through peripheral veins is the fastest route to give any medication into the body. And there are advantages and disadvantages here. So for advantages, we have absorption that is very quick, keeps a consistent therapeutic level inside the blood, and less damage than other routes. For example, sub-Q, IM, PR, or even PO. Now the disadvantages here are fluid volume overload if a fluid is given too fast, as well as infection, infiltration, and all the other problems with IV administration, which we're gonna go into in a short bit. Now for types of IV access, we have short-term and long-term. For short-term, these are given through regular IVs in peripheral veins. Remember, short-term means hospital setting for a few days or even weeks. And an example is an AC or antecubital near the elbow, hand, foot, or even newborns. We often give these IVs in the scalp because the head is very vascular. And for long-term are central lines. For long-term drug therapy here, like IV antibiotics or TPN or clients with cancer on chemotherapy. Examples of these are CVCs as well as PICC lines. Now a CVC is a central venous catheter typically placed right below the collarbone, and the catheter goes directly into the top of the right atrium. And a PICC line is a peripherally inserted central catheter, inserted directly into the vein of the upper arm, guided or threaded into a large vein right above the right side of the heart called the superior vena cava. Now the big problem with all central lines here is infection. They have a high risk for infection. So please be sure to write that down. Now switching gears on those short-term peripheral IVs, we wanna avoid these locations. The anterior ulnar vein, there's too many nerves, or even near valves. You guys can see bumps under the skin inside of a vein, and that indicates a valve most often. Another one here is paralysis or a paralyzed arm. Do not put a peripheral IV in a paralyzed arm. Or even clients with mastectomy, who have a removal of breast tissue, typically from breast cancer. There's a removal of lymph nodes, so do not use those arms for a peripheral IV. And another big one here is fistula or grafts. This is for clients on dialysis, and usually in end-stage renal failure. So do not use these arms to put an IV into. And lastly is varicose veins and scar tissue areas. We do not want to use these locations to insert any IVs into. Now a little side note here that most students get wrong. Remember, IV infusions are medications. Hey there, nursing student, listen up. Did you know only 20% of our videos are here on YouTube? You're missing out on over 900 videos not on YouTube. Try it for free. Visit simplenursing.com today. It's not just water or normal saline. It's an actual medication that needs a doctor's order or an HCP's order. So an HCP must prescribe the type, the volume, or the amount, and also the rate. All right, now moving on to a top-tested topic here, when to change IVs. All right, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides. And also feel free to share the love, share with a classmate, and even your instructor. See you guys in the next videos.